Good morning, once again. Uh, good morning to everyone who is joining us. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us from, once again. Uh, I hope you all are doing well. All fine? You survived first week of college. Congratulations. Okay, Just a few more weeks to go. Uh, but I hope you are enjoying. I hope you are learning. I hope everybody is learning. I hope you are being blessed uh, by every subject. But good to see you all uh, online as well. Thank you for joining in. I hope you are doing well, uh, wherever you are joining us from. Um, thank you for taking the time to join in. Um, awesome. Yeah, um, let, let's just uh, pray and, uh, and start off. Okay, Father, we invite you. We thank you for your presence, uh, Lord. We humble ourselves before you, Jesus, as your word says, we come boldly into the throne of grace. Father, we thank you for your shed blood on the cross for us. We thank you for making a way for us to come into your presence, God. Holy Spirit, we submit and surrender our minds, our hearts, I pray, and we open it up to you to come and pour your wisdom and your knowledge and your understanding into us. Come and do what you do best. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, Cyril, can you reduce the treble a little bit? It's a little too high. Just the highs or the treble, just a little bit, yeah. Okay, yeah, thanks. This hall is very bad for acoustics. So. Okay, but can everybody hear me okay at the back? All okay? All right. Uh, I hope everybody online can hear me all right. Yeah, okay, awesome. Uh, great. So, uh, as I always say, I'd like to do a quick recap of what we did in the last two sessions. Uh, is that okay if you do a recap? Yeah, so uh, we started off by understanding, giving a basic definition for what worship is, isn't it? That was the first class. Uh, we looked at a bunch of definitions. Uh, who all said what about worship? You all said a lot of things about worship, about surrender, laying down, uh, and worship is a lifestyle, etc., etc. And in the last class, we learned about praise. Yeah? Yes, no, maybe? Okay, so I'll ask this question again. Do you hear me? Okay, so if you can hear me. <laughs> yeah, okay, so you respond, all right. Um, so we learned about praise in the last class, very briefly, isn't it? Um, then one, we looked at one particular verse, that's Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. What does that say? Hebrews 13, 15. What does Hebrews 13, 15 say? It talks about... Continu continual offer of praises to God. Continual offer of praises to God. It is the spiritual sacrifice. Right? right? Praise is the spiritual it's sacrifice. It's the fruit of our... It's the fruit of our garden. Leaves. Of our leaves. leaves. Thank you. Thanks, Pankaj. Yes. <laughs> it's a high fire. Okay. <laughs> Right, thanks, Charles. Yeah, so praise is a spiritual sacrifice. Everybody say spiritual sacrifice. Right? Spiritual, spiritual sacrifice. sacrifice. Yeah, and then it goes on to say that it's the fruit of our lips, isn't it? Yes, no? Yeah, so yes. we understood what is the context between the spiritual sacrifice. Why is the writer or the author of the book of Hebrews saying spiritual sacrifice? Does anybody remember the context? Nobody remembers the context? So the author of the book of Hebrews is saying to the new Christians, right? New Christians who started believing in Jesus, who are being persecuted, saying, Okay, just because you know you became a Christian, you cannot go into the temple. You can't offer up sacrifices. Then he's saying, it's okay. Don't feel bad. Okay, what is more important is your spiritual sacrifice, your continual praises. Right? That is the fruit of the lips. And then we looked at fruits. Hebrews 13, 15 is saying the fruit of your lips. That means the fruit can be sweet. 
It can be bitter, right? It can be ripe, or it can be rotten, right? And the fruit can be seasonal or available throughout the year, isn't it? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, thank you. So, <laughs> right, I'm doing a quick recap, and I, you know, it's kind of important. So, um, so Hebrews 13, 15 says, "Let your praises be continual, not just seasonal, not not when you're going through nice season." Okay, even when you're going through difficult seasons in life, offer up spiritual sacrifices, which is, which is what? Praise. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah, thanks. So I can see that everybody is on, you know, understood. But what I want to do today is uh, we'll start with the second chapter. Thanks, guys. I hope you all are on line with me. Yeah. Um, we're going to start off with the second chapter, but we're not going to start with the notes right away. Okay, so I want to give an introduction to the second chapter. Okay, is that all right? Um, so it's okay if you don't find every, everything what I want to share in the notes. Don't panic. It's okay. Uh, I'll probably share all the notes a little later as well. Okay. Um, so in the second chapter, we're going to start learning about the Hebrew words for praise and worship. Okay, Hebrew words for praise and worship. Uh, now, why is this important? Why do we have to learn about the Hebrew words for praise and worship? Sorry, bro. Because the Bible was originally written in Hebrew. Okay, because it was originally written in Hebrew. Yeah, all right. Is that what you said? Okay, yeah. Anything else? Anybody else? Right. Sorry. It has a different meaning, a different perspective. Yeah, okay. So, you know, for example, in English, we have one word for love. Yes? Only one word, right? Now, we use this word for everything, right? I love my father, I love my brother, I love my sister, I love my wife, I love my husband, I love chicken tikka masala, I love biryani, I love pani puri, I love pizzas, I love this, I love Pastor Roshan. <laughs> I love APC, I love Jesus, everything, right? We have one word to define everything. It's like it doesn't really mean anything, isn't it? Um, and, and so you don't get different perspective. Okay, everybody say perspective. Okay, now perspective. let's... Perspective. Thanks, guys. So let's say, for example, we are all outside this classroom, okay? Outside. Now, and let's say a bunch of you students will be on this side of the classroom outside, and a bunch of you students outside, okay? Now, and every all of you decide are peeking through the windows over there, okay? Let's say that you're peeking, in, you're looking inside the classroom from those windows, and you guys are looking into the classroom from those windows. Now, the classroom will look very different for those looking from the other side. Yes or no? And then the classroom will look very different for those who are looking from this side, isn't it? It won't look the same. Yes, that is called perspective. Like for those who are looking from, from my left side, you will not be able to see, okay, this maybe this plant or the speakers and whatnot. Or the people who are looking from the other side won't be able to see those computers and all those chairs. And so that's what different words with a similar meaning does. It opens up your eyes to different perspective to what one word has to say. Are you with me? Yes? So that's the importance of just trying to do a word study in general. OK? Now, if you're studying the Bible, one of the things, one of the ways in how you can study the Bible is doing word study. Okay, you take the word love. Now, you just take the word love. Ancient Greek has four different words to the word love, and they all are different. We are not going to do that now, because this is praise and worship. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, and the modern Greek has six words for the word love. And so that's one of the ways to study the Bible is you is word study. Okay, any word, let's take the word faith or faithful. And then you go and you know, search. What is the Hebrew word for faith? What is the Hebrew word for faithful? What's the Greek word for faith? You know, and so on and so forth. Today, because we are studying praise and worship, we look at praise and worship. What is the different words that has to say? Yeah, are you with me? Yes, guys? Okay, cool. Um, now, all of these different words for praise in Hebrew is a posture, okay? Um, everybody say posture. 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 Right, so what is, uh, I know it sounds funny, but it's okay. So, but what is posture? What? Okay, that's an English word, but so posture is basically the way you, how you are standing, the way you are moving your body, the way you are standing. It's all about body movement. Yeah. All right, Charles. Here's the thing. Okay. Um. So when I ask a question, what you can do the next time is raise your hand, and then I can unmute you, and or I can ask you to go ahead and speak. Um. So what happens is there might be someone here in the classroom speaking and that might clash with what you have to say. So to avoid uh, clashes, it's okay, so you know we'll have you raise your hand or something and so then um, just so you know we can communicate clearly. Okay, thanks Charles, thanks for understanding. And that goes for everybody, okay? So if you want to say something, just put your hands up. Sorry, I'm making you feel like school children. That's not the intention, is to have clear intention. It's like, sir, can I go drink water, sir? No. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, right. Just so you know, we are all clear uh, in our communication. Okay. Um, but thank you for understanding and thank you for cooperating. Okay. So, posture simply in its uh, definition is your position. Okay. That's what your posture is. Now, when we sing national anthem, how do we stand? Tension, right? Yes, and that is a posture. Who did salute? <laughs> okay, and some of you are sitting like this on the desk. Some of you are sitting like this. Okay, and some classes, you know, sleeping on the desk. Okay, wait, get me a chair, bro. So, okay. <laughs> and every posture says something. Yes? You are communicating something with the posture. Now, for example, uh, I hope you can see me. OK, now. All right, I'm, for those online, I'm sitting on a chair, OK? Um, so if I'm sitting in the chair like this and listening to you, I'm leaning forward. That means I'm interested in what you have to say, isn't it? Yes? I sit back like this. Put my leg up. Okay, you know, it, it, it says something else, isn't it? I'm communicating something else. What am I saying is, yeah, you know, your presence is important, but not that important. I am more important, so I'm going to be more relaxed. If I don't respect you at all, I will put my legs on the table. Yes or no? I will put my leg on the table. How would you feel? What will you think of me? Not very nice things. Yes or no? OK. So that's a basic understanding of what a posture is. OK? Um, now, posture is important for everything. Um, for example, now I, used to, I used to play the drums. I don't play as much. If a student comes for classes to me, it's like, sir, I want to learn drums. I'm like, yeah, sure. The first thing I teach them in the first class is how to sit, not to play the drums. You know, how to sit naturally and how to be able to access playing the drums very naturally. Now, there was a time where uh, you've seen drum kits, no? You've seen drum sets? 
you know, and they all have a seat, right? That's called the throne. Okay, now the throne, you can adjust the height, you can increase it, decrease it according to your height. So for one of the concerts, I didn't take my throne. Like, I didn't take my drum throne and go. So I had to use a chair like this for those online, you know. <laughs> I had to use a chair like this. But you see this chair, it, it has a curve like this, isn't it? A drum throne will be flat. Now, because this chair had a curve like this, and I played for 45 minutes, I, my posture was not right. OK? I had a wrong posture. And because of that, I had lower back pain for six months. Are you with me? What I'm trying to say is there is good posture. And then there is bad posture, right? If there is good posture, there has to be bad posture. Are you with me? Right? Some of you are like, OK, what are you going on about posture, posture, sir? OK. But before we start talking about praise in general, um, the, and I told you that Hebrew, or the language of Hebrew, originally was a painting, uh, not painting, sorry, uh, a picture language that means they used to draw i'm not going to draw because i'm very bad okay <laughs> I get a zero but the original hebrew word is shaha okay s h a c h a h s h a c h a h shaha OK? Shaha was the original Hebrew word for worship. OK? Not praise, but worship. OK? And the picture of this word was to fall face down. OK? The picture of this word was to fall face down down or fall down completely before the presence of God. OK, that's what Shaha is. It was, this was the posture of worship. Everybody say Shaha. Little loudly. Shaha. Okay, we're learning Shaha. Hebrew. Yeah, thank you. Shaha. Okay, there's a little bit of phlegm involved. Phlegm, you know, is Shaha. <laughs> hey, it's not me, okay? It's the language, all right? <laughs> okay, those online, if you can't see what, what I'm writing on the board, I apologize, but don't worry. I will share these notes with you, okay? Um, is my whitewashed. Yeah, I know, Charles. Yeah, uh, sorry about that, but I'll share these notes with you so you know what I'm, what exactly I'm speaking about. Uh, okay, so it was this was shaha or face down was the ultimate posture of worship. Okay, it was the ultimate posture of worship. That means. He's saying, I have no control over me. I don't want anything to control over. I'm giving you complete surrender. Right? So this posture of worship was absolute surrender, or in other words, humility. What's a Hindi word meaning for humility? Humble humility. Malayalam word, Hindi word for humility, or Telugu, sorry, Samaskar, Samaskaram, that's humility, right, Telugu, okay, so in Hindi, anyone, Deen, Daniel Namrata, 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 
Seriously? Really? Namrata? Okay. All right. Okay. No, I've only heard that, you know, girl's name, right? Namrata. So Namrata is humility. Okay. I learned a new word. All right. All right. Thanks, uh, Daniel. Thanks, everyone. Oh, Andrew, that's there's a V or is it just Namrata? Vinamrata. Vinamrata. Okay. <laughs> Sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, forgive me, okay? But uh, yeah. So the ultimate posture of worship is a posture of humility. That means I'm surrendering everything before you, Lord. And you're going before God and saying, God, you are my everything. I don't want to have any control over my life. I'm giving you control. You be the king. You be the God of my life. You come and take complete control. You are my king. And so I bow down before you in worship. That is what the original posture of Shaha is. Are you with me? Okay. Um, let's look at Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Okay, so in NIV, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Okay, you're there? All right, it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, because of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Okay, uh, can anybody read that in Hindi? Romeo, इसलिए प्रिय भाइयों मैं तुमसे विनती करता हूँ कि तुम अपने शरीरों को परमेश्वर को सौंप दो, उनको जीवित पवित्र बलिदान रहने दो, जिसे परमेश्वर ग्रहण कर सके। यह सोचते हुए कि परमेश्वर ने तुम्हारे लिए कितना किया है, क्या यह मांग बहुत अधिक है? Okay, um, thank you. So I'm just going to reiterate this point again. Is if you want to say something or read something. Um, please raise your hand um, so that I can let you speak because uh, some if someone is waiting here in the classroom, um, you know, so that you don't interrupt them in the middle. Okay, I appreciate it, but uh, please follow this protocol, okay? And also, is there another microphone here that you can use? Then use the microphone when you're reading it, okay? So people online also hear you, all right? Yeah, no problem, uh, but yeah, it's just again to make this whole communication thing very simple. Okay, um, now if possible, I want you to go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 uh, in the message version. Okay, uh, you can write it down, you can read it later. Uh, the message version says like this So here is what I want you to do God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life. Your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Okay, I love that version, the uh, message uh, version of it. Uh, you can, uh, yeah. Uh, if someone can paste the message version on the chat section, that'll be great for everyone. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Okay, so what are some of the words that is important for you in that verse? Tell me. What are some of the words that's that's kind of, that stands out in that verse for you? For those online, you can uh, put it, put your answers in the chat section. Uh, just, yeah, Carl, you can say. We are supposed to live a life that is holy before the Lord. 
Holy, okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, um, holy living sacrifice, right? Okay, what is acceptable to God? Offering. What else, anybody? What are some of the important words that kind of stood up, stands out for you? It's okay if it's repeated, no problem. You can feel free to say it again. If that's what stood out for you, that's what it is. Yes. Okay, can you also tell the meaning? Thoughts, okay. Thoughts, what do you do with your thoughts? Thoughts? Yes, Carl. We, we are also supposed to uh, be dedicated to God's service. We are supposed to be dedicated to God's service. Yes. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Okay, so yeah, holy living sacrifice offering. Um, now I want us to just quickly, very, very quickly look at, um, say, living sacrifice. Living, let's break those words, okay? Yeah, who's uh, raising the hands now? Okay. Present your bodies, all right. Sacrifice. Okay, here's the thing. I want you to tell me, okay, um, what do you think is the posture of something that's going to be sacrificed? Uh, what do you think is the posture of the of anything that's going to be sacrificed? It's like, yeah, I'm going to be sacrificed. You know, I'm going to be sacrificed. You know, it's laid down, isn't it? Fall down, complete surrender. Yes or no? Okay, uh, absolute surrender, right? It's saying, I have no control over me. Now, there's another thing called offering, right? Offer your bodies as living sacrifice, is Paul saying. Yes or no? So he's saying, offer your bodies as living sacrifice. So if there is an offer, that means there are two things involved, right? So one is the offerer. I don't have to write everything. Okay, so <laughs> one is the offerer and the offering itself, isn't it? What am I? What do I mean by that? Is how many of you have given offering in church? Others known you offering. Very nice. Okay. <laughs> okay, two three people. All right. Yeah, coffee. So, what do you do? The offering bag passes. You take, okay, you see, okay, how much I have first? Ah, 10 rupees, it's in, okay, so <laughs> whatever, right? So you take the offering, let's say you have the offering in your hand, let's put your hands up, okay. So put your hands up, everybody, okay, so you have an offering in your hand. So you, you are the offerer, right? You are the offerer. And the offering is in your hand. Okay, put your hands down. Thank you. Now, let's say in the Old Testament, you come with an innocent lamb, like a small lamb, right? Everybody understands lamb, right? Mutton. <laughs> okay. So you bring it, you give it to the priest. Now, before giving it, so you are the offerer, you are giving, and the lamb is the offering. Yes or no? Now, just like initially I said, looking at this classroom from one side and the other side will give you a different perspective. 
the offerer will have a perspective and the offering will have another perspective. Okay, what am I saying? So let's say the offering is the lamb, right? The offerer is me. I go to the priest and tell, hi priest, I committed a sin, so here's my offering, an innocent lamb. Okay, so now the wages of sin is, wages of sin is death. Okay, so if you sin, you have to die. Isn't it? So here's the thing. I sinned, the offerer, I have sinned, but I am giving an offering, an innocent animal, lamb. Now, the offering can look at me and say, why do I have to die for something you did? Yes or no? So in the Old Testament, right, when you went into the temple or the tabernacle, when you gave that innocent lamb as a sacrifice, as an offering, you can't just give, OK, high priest, here you go. See you later. You can't walk away. You give the offering, you wait, and you watch it burn on the altar. You watch it. It should have been me on that altar, but an innocent lamb is taking my place. But now, Paul, in Romans 12, verse 1, is saying, chapter 12, verse 1, is saying, offer yourself. What he's saying is, you have to be the offerer and the offering. Not as a dead sacrifice, but as living. So in other words, every day of our life, we are asked to live in absolute surrender. That is the acceptable worship unto God. And that is the proper posture of worship. The proper posture of worship is you live a life of absolute surrender as a living sacrifice. You are the offerer and the offering. OK? I hope you are all with me, OK? So if, if all of this, any questions, guys? You know what they used to say in my school, right? If you have no questions, that means you understood everything or didn't understand nothing. <laughs> Hey, Charles, do you? I see your hands raised. Yeah, do you have something to say? Charles, uh, if you have uh, something to say, you can speak now or forever. Oh, no, I'm just yeah. oh, sorry, my mic was still muted. Okay. Um, I have a question, sir. I, in the explanation you just gave, is clear on its own as it is but i was going back to the message translation it says uh the second part of it it says take your everyday ordinary life your sleeping yeah. eating going to work and walking around place it before god as an offering now yes. my question comes here on the how part how do we offer such everyday ordinary experience as an offering before God. Right. So it's, as the version says, um, so Charles's question is, in the message translation, it says, uh, offer, take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. How do I do that? Um, it's, can I give an example, uh, Charles? So I have to teach here in Bible college three days a week on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Now, if I don't surrender or go before God and say, Lord, I surrender, I have to teach, here's my tongue, speak through me. 
if I don't surrender, then life will become like a routine, right? If you take surrender out of your life, then it becomes a routine, right? And so you take everything, anything, and thankfulness and gratitude will keep you in that place of offering up, uh, of offering uh, sacrifice, or uh, uh, what do I say? Or just giving an offering. So it will always keep you on the right track, being thankful and being grateful. So that's my way of doing it. That's my answer. I'm sure every somebody else will have something else to say about it. But living a life of thankfulness and being grateful for what God has done will keep you in the right track on how to live a life of worship. So I hope that kind of answers. But what I've learned over the years is that if you take surrender out of your life, that is surrendering your life to God in everything you do, your life will become a routine. And if when your life, when anything becomes a routine, you immediately become bored. And you know, like, oh, what is this? I have to go teach praise and worship with these guys. So you go into ungratefulness, not being thankful, right? So going into his presence saying, I'm thankful for this opportunity so I can pour into the lives of you know, 20 people whom I'm going to see for only three years and then I might never see again. I'm grateful for that opportunity so I surrender myself. So you see the perspective kind of changes immediately. Right? So, and that is worship. I mean, you go back home, you're sweeping the house, cleaning the house, washing the vessels. Uh, I have a three-month-old baby at home helping my wife with changing the diapers. All of that is worship. Uh, and so, yeah, that's what that version says, isn't it? Take your everyday, ordinary life and make it extraordinary by surrender, basically. That's what it is. Okay, uh, are you with me, everyone? Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, so we so far we've looked at the posture of worship, which is the good posture is surrender, absolute surrender, laying down everything. And we also saw that if there is good posture, there is what is the opposite of good? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So if there's good posture and that good posture is humility. What is the opposite of humility? Pride. Proud pride. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Thanks, Charles. Okay, what, what, what's uh, pride in Hindi? What is ahankar? Which language is that? Ahankaram. <laughs> Timuru. <laughs> Sorry? Wait, okay, Daniel is saying Bhamand in Hindi. Is that right? Daniel, I'm going to check with them if you're right, okay? So I'm, I'm just kidding, okay. Garv, okay. Uh, any other language uh, in Pride? Because uh, any other language, uh, the African languages in your own uh, first language? Garvam, okay. Whoa. It sounds itself like. Hemme. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, in Canada. Hemme. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if humility is good posture, pride is a bad posture. That's the opposite of good posture. Now, remember, I said because my posture was wrong. For one show, for 45 minutes, I had lower backache for like six months. I had to go for treatment and physiotherapy and whatnot. And so pride is dangerous. If there is one thing that I want you to learn from this course, the entire course, if you don't remember anything, remember this one thing. Okay, just this one thing is this thing called pride. In your language, just say the word. 
ahankar, whatever it is, that will destroy you. It will absolutely destroy your life. It will destroy your calling. It can even destroy your ministry, your personal life, people's life around you as well, because of pride. Now, I'm not saying this. We look at the Bible verses. OK. The first worship leader in the Bible had serious problem with humility. OK, who's the first worship leader? Lucifer, right? Lucifer did not have to play a guitar. He was like a guitar, right? He was beautiful. He was magnificent in the way God created him. Okay, but let's go to Isaiah chapter 14. Okay, Isaiah chapter 14, um, let's see from where, let's read from verse 12, okay, Isaiah chapter 14, I'm going, I'll read it for us, okay, everybody there, Isaiah chapter 14? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool, let me read it for us, I'm going to read from verse 12. 215 okay just stay with me it says how you are fallen from heaven O Lucifer son of the morning how you are cut down to the ground you who weakened the nations for you have said in your heart I will ascend into heaven I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farther side of the north. Verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Verse 15, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Okay, so all he did was he said in his heart, I will ascend above the throne of God. I will be like the Most High. And he fell. Let's read another scripture. Uh, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 28 this time. Ezekiel chapter 28. Okay, just say an amen if you're there. Okay. Amen. All right. Ezekiel chapter 28, I'm going to read verse 14, 15, and 17. Ezekiel 28, I'm going to read verse 14, 15, and 17. Okay? So verse 14 says, You were the anointed cherub who covers... I established you, I established you, you were on the holy mountain of God, you walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created, till iniquity was found in you. Verse 17, it says, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before the kings that they might gaze at you. Okay. All right. We'll stop there. So uh, there is something about pride that God absolutely hates. I'll stop here and we'll look at this whole subject or the topic of pride in another chapter. But like I said, guys, look at me now. Yes. If you forget everything, and if you can remember just one thing in this course, is remember that pride is dangerous. Okay? I was like, oh, I'm the worship leader, no? See how nicely I'm singing? You know, I'm the best. Why are you singing? You can't sing well. Shuf, shuf. <laughs> the attitude of pride, God absolutely hates it. 
in a last verse, Genesis, James chapter 4, verse 6. James 4, verse 6. It says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Right? He resists. Okay, Cyril, can you come here for a second? So James chapter 4, verse 6, it says, God resists the proud. Okay, come, come. okay this is Cyril, by the way. He's also your classmate. Say hi, Cyril. Okay. So, <laughs> Okay, so when God says he resists the proud, let's say, so you're bringing me an offering. So just bring me an offering. Okay. But God is like, he's resisting him. Keep push, push yourself. Push. Come, 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 come. So God is resisting. You're not strong enough. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So thanks. Dad. So I'm the worship. Let's say I'm the worship leader, right? I'm a worshiper. I'm bringing this bowl of worship before God. And because of my attitude of being proud and filled with pride, he's saying, I don't want your worship because your heart is filled with pride. I don't want it. So I resist you. It's a very sad thing that can happen to any, in any of our lives. Is God resisting our worship? God resisted the worship of Cain. You remember that story? Mm. Yeah. Um, so I'll stop here and I want to ask you this question and you reflect through the week uh, in your heart is ask yourself, make that prayer like that psalmist says, search me and know me and see if there's any wicked ways in me. Make that prayer. Lord, I come before you with an open heart. You search me. You know me. You see if there is any wicked ways in me. Are you with me? Right? As worshippers, one of the first things, th there's, there's something beautiful about humility. There is something beautiful about brokenness that God absolutely loves. It's like the laws of physics. Laws of physics in this world is whatever goes up has to come down. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the law in the kingdom of God is that if there is someone with a broken heart who, who comes before him with brokenness, he cannot ignore. He has to respond to the broken cry or to the desperate cry, isn't it? And that's why he responded to the cry of Hagar in the desert, because it was a cry of desperation. And Psalmist cries out time after time, as the deer pants for the waters, I pants for you. As the watchman waits for the morning, I wait on you. All of those are prayers of desperation, of, of hunger and brokenness. And so let, let our hearts always remain in that posture of brokenness and in the posture of humility. And let not be careful of pride. Be careful of pride. Okay? Um, so I hope everybody's still alive. All of you are good. Uh, we'll stop here for today's session. And in the next class, we'll continue with chapter two. Okay? Um, thank you, everybody, for joining in. God bless you. Okay. I'll see you later. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. <laughs> good morning.